The paddle from Seventh Lake to Blue Mountain Lake provides a beautiful overnight canoe trip in the Adirondack Mountains. Robbie Fernet from Racket River Outfitters is a longtime local guide who can help us learn more about the area. Well, I'm Robbie, Robbie Fernet. Um, we started Racket River Outfitters in 1983. Uh, we based it off the old Adirondack tradition of building boats out of wood and taking people through the woods and waters here from Old Forge all the way up through to the Saranax. There's a big awareness program to wash your boats before and between the carries. Canoers are coming from all over the Northeast, so that'd be really important to really scrub your boat as best you could um, and check for any invasives. The DEC Boat Launch on Seventh Lake provides a nifty starting point in overnight parking. The portage from Seventh Lake to Eighth Lake takes you right through the Eighth Lake campground. As you launch into Eighth Lake, you'll find yourself surrounded in wild forests and great rainbow trout fishing. The portage from Eighth Lake to Brown's Track Inlet is mostly wheelable and reaches the highest point along the Northern Forest Canoe Trail. My favorite part of the trip probably is when you leave Eighth Lake and you get over to Brown's Track Inlet and you wind down through the Brown's Track Inlet. It's, if you're a birder or a plant lover, then it's just loaded with um, all the uh, bog plants that you can imagine, you know, going down through there, the sundew and the pitcher plants, and you just hop over these little beaver dams and it's real windy. So you, you just feel like you're off in some fairy tale place to be, you know, it's pretty neat. Um, from there, you pop out onto Racket Lake, and Racket Lake's a big lake and has a lot of gorgeous beaches on it. You want to time your trip. Racket Lake's pretty no notorious for um, crosswinds coming down the lake. So if you arrive there late in the afternoon, you could be exposed to some pretty high winds that are, if you're good, especially if you're heading up the Blue Mountain, they're gonna be hitting you from the side. The main places we can cause damage or avoid it is when we're camping and, you know, practice good, clean, safe camping rules. So you can have campfires, but you gotta respect that. We really don't want anybody cutting trees. Um, we don't want you pushing trees over, so you can just walk around the woods and you'll find plenty of wood down. We don't even need a saw or an ax because there's so much wood available. It's nice to canoe camp with a fire. I mean, as long as you are real conservative in your approach, and if you do have a campfire, really douse it out. There's no such thing as too much water and stirring up the ashes. The other things are, obviously, don't scar the forest or the trees. Leave your campsite cleaner than you found it. If someone before you either left or forgot some litter and stuff, we pick it up. We always are put, you know, bringing a trash bag with us for cleaning up sites like that. As you go up the uh, Marion River toward the Portish over to Blue Mountain Lake, and it's kind of just a low, real slow moving. You'll probably see a lot of the bog lifes on the shore and stuff. You end at a small stretch of rapids and you get out, and it's a nice, flat, easy portage. But if you'll notice when you get to the end of the portage, you'll see all these cribs in the water. And that was, this, that was the place where they called it the world's shortest railroad. It was the three-quarter mile length of the carry. They actually, the guy was uh, one of the Durants, and he was a railroad baron, so he could afford to put his own little short railroad in there to do the carry. And that end of that carry brings you into the Eckford chain that leads to Blue Mountain Lake. You're on the Udawana, and it's pretty spectacular. Uh, typically, you have a tailwind. Blue Mountain has really crystal clear waters, um, really nice fishing for lake trout and brook trout. It has beautiful islands, and as you approach Blue Mountain, Blue Mountain is just standing right up there in front of you, so it's a pretty, pretty impressive view. There's really only one public access point in Blue Mountain Lake, and it's the town beach. As you come into the lake, it's to the southeast corner of the lake, and it's a nice sandy area to pull your boats out, and it's a gorgeous spot. 